Okay, um, hello everyone. I'm Robert Böhme from the part-time scientist and we are doing four short presentations here. First of all, I want to give you a short introduction on what the Google Lunar X Prize is and what we as a team want to achieve in this regard. This is more or less a non-technical presentation, the first part. The second part will be totally based around our lunar rover prototype, the current development model for 2009, which will be revealed live on stage by Michael and Jürgen. The third part will be featuring our board computing unit. Yeah, simply call it this way. And the fourth part, the, the last part, is something which was quite a secret right now, which will be revealed today, some real, very cool new way to do deep space communications in future. So, this is the last part of it. <laughs> okay, uh, so first I have to say we are no professionals by any means in regards of presentation, so please bear with us a little bit and let's see how this works out, okay? Um, okay, <laughs> just start. Um, <clears throat> so, first of all, what is the Google Lunar X Prize? Before I start with the Google Lunar X Prize, let us say what is the X Prize anyway? Because X Prize, just a word. In the history, if we look back at it, an X Prize itself is just a prize set out to achieve something that is uh, really far away, that hasn't been done by anyone so far, and where there is for mostly economic no reason to do it right now. So, one example in history of this is the spirit of St. Louis. So, if you know Charles Lindbergh, you can see him here, um, flew an airplane from um, America to France about 1920 and successfully, um, and successfully did it and this was in the regards of a competition set out to get, win a $10,000 prize money. $10,000 isn't quite much in nowadays dimension but back then it was quite a lot of money and this prize money was set out by one single individual just to show, see if something like this could be possible. This prize money um, really put out a development where people tried to see how can I build an airplane to cross the, um, the distance from America to Europe. So, okay, take this to our times. One very recent example of um, our times no? yeah, is the Anzari X Prize. The Anzari X Prize was set up by the X Prize Foundation, which is a non-profit organization based in the US, in, back in 2004. The goal was to build a, a space, suborbital spaceship which is um, capable of doing a reusable re-entry in the Earth's atmosphere. So, meaning you have to get about higher than 100 kilometers about Earth's ground. And you have to do it two times in less than 14 days without exchanging more than 10% of the parts you used in the first try. May sound a bit complicated, but the idea behind this is, is that you don't use uh, throwaway space chips like most of the rocket engines we nowadays use. And this competition was competition was won pretty fast, as, I, as one can say, by um, with spaceship one craft. This is the first non-government manned spacecraft in 2004. So this was the first X Prize that really kicked off a long history of X Prizes that followed. Right now there are about three active X Prizes, one about uh, uh, human genome, um, automotive industry, so building more efficient cars, and the X Prize we participate in, the Google Lunar X Prize. To give you an idea what the Google Lunar X Prize is in the state right now, the Google Lunar X Prize is going on for two years right now, and after two years we have 21 teams from over 12 nations participating. So, okay, you may say, yeah, okay, let's put up together a team to create a mission to the moon. So why not? But the point is, you can't simply um, say you uh, want to make, a, want to set up a team to participate in the Google X Prize. You have to present a complete concept and you have to prove that, uh, let's uh, put it in the more fine words, and tot not totally nuts. So you have to prove that you're, um, professional enough to at least have a chance to achieve it. So all the countries you can see highlighted in white are countries where teams have um, already formed to participate in the Google and X Prize. One great thing about the Google and X Prize is, says, 
Normally, all prices, NAS, NASA, does a lot of um, prices, like the Northrop Gruner Lander Challenge, where you uh, have to build a lunar lander module, which can land on the Earth's surface and start again, and so on. These prices are a lot only based for, uh, only for persons who live in the USA. This has something to do with uh, laws and regulations over in the US, where you can use uh, US tax money only for persons that are living in the US itself. So if the, um, NASA would set out the Google Lunar X Prize, so it would be the NASA Lunar X Prize, uh, no German or any other team then coming from America could participate in it. So the Google Lunar X Prize is really something extraordinary because teams from all parts of the world can take part in it. Okay. So, so what is so special about the Google Lunar X Prize? So if you take a look at this picture, it's pretty much well known to everyone. It's a so-called Earthrise picture. It's a picture taken from the moon where you can see the Earth rising up. So one thing that this picture doesn't show to you is one important thing. It's the distance between Earth and moon. It's more than 400,000 kilometers. And it's, if you want to get to the moon, it's not just a straight line. We have to do a lot of uh, trajectory calculations to find your way with an um, uh, aircraft, uh, spacecraft from Earth to the Moon. I will show you more details about this later. This is just an introduction part. So it's a little bit out of range here. So, okay. Just show you something about the topics that the Google Lunar X Prize has and the prize money about it. Huh. <laughs> Poor Mario. Okay, so we have a grand prize where you have to, with uh, 20 million US dollars, for 20 million US dollars, you have to build a spacecraft. No, not spacecraft. You have to build a rover, send it to the moon, and the rover has to travel 500 meters on the lunar surface and transmit a so-called mooncast data package back to Earth. Mooncast itself may sound pretty much Web 2.0, but it really is something pretty cool idea behind this, because the mooncast says you have to transmit real-time HD 720p video signal back to Earth. So. Think about it a little bit. We have 400,000 kilometers on one side on distance, and we have real-time HD video streaming signals, and we have something that you don't know about it, but we will come to that later. We have the fact that the technology we can use in space due to radiation is not the same that you can use right now when you go to, let's say, Media Markt and buy a new laptop. So it's not that powerful. So we don't have simply have the capability right now to do HD real-time video encoding. But we'll show, you to do, we'll show you some way to do this. So, what about the uh, second and third prize? Uh, the second prize is the Heritage Prize. The Heritage Prize is about shooting a picture of a so-called site of interest. To say it more easily, you have to shoot a picture of the Apollo landing site. So you have to prove that you were there, shoot a photo, and if you do so, you get four million US dollars. So. I think every one of you know. Uh, every one of you know why they set out a four million prize to get a picture from the Apollo landing site. <laughs> okay, so we have got another prize, but I don't think this prize will be there much longer because it is the water detection bonus prize. And after the latest Alcross results, I think this prize will, let's say, at least get a little bit smaller prize because right now we get four million US dollars to prove the existence of water on the moon, but. The last Air Cross mission of NASA already did it, so I'm not sure how this evolves. And there's one thing to note about it in scientific regards. If you want to prove water ice on the moon, you have to go for one, uh, from one of the, uh, the South Pole, for example. Nearly, nearly all moon missions, uh, lunar missions right now, we are going for equatorial reasons. This has something to do with the landing trajectory and the surface. The surface on the moon is pretty much cluttered, so you have gaps of the size of 15 meters. So if you've got a rover, with a, a rover with a length of, let's say, one meter, and you have a gap like 15 meters, so you have simply no way to go around it. And in equatorial regions, you don't have this problem. You have very fine regolith sand. It's almost all one flat place. And at the pole region, you have uh, every meter craters and a harsh environment, so it's pretty much hard to travel on the South Pole. So and then if you have the range bonus,